Welcome to Real Estate Economics Weekly Webinar Series. Real Estate Economics is a leading provider of residential market consulting services and online research tools. Every week we provide a webinar covering a variety of topics. Sometimes we'll address the entire nation or a state, particular region or MSA. This week we're going to talk about the Santa Clarita Valley area of Los Angeles County. We're going to look at our new home development surveys cover some of our survey to survey trends, make a, an analysis of market coverage in this area and look at some long-term trends. I'm John Mulville. If you look at this uh, particular market area, um, things have changed quite a bit since uh, 2002. The red dots were the active communities as of the third quarter of 2002. If you look at the market coverage in that time, the I-5 corridor was much more important than a lot of the competition was on that side of the valley. At present, five of the eleven are along the 14 corridor, uh, and many of the ones, uh, the westerly communities, are, have gone north and have gone inland, uh, so the geographic coverage has changed quite a bit here over the years. The peak of uh, community counts out here in this market was in 2004 when we got to about 45, so community counts have drawn down here significantly in the last few years as have competitive levels. Here's a summary of the 11 communities that are presently active in this market. Two in Fair Oaks Ranch, that's on the uh, 14 side of the valley, as is Stetson Ranch. The rest are in the Santa Clarita area, uh, several in uh, the Master Plans River Village, West Creek, and West Hills. If you look at the um, programs here, most of these programs are in sort of suburban single-family densities with lots from 3,500 to about 6,000. The uh, townhomes are 12 an acre, uh, so really no podium, nothing at high density, uh, no real larger lots, and notably in this market there are no single-story homes in any of the communities, so we don't really have a product that's well suited for mature buyers, move-down buyers. It's pretty much targeted at suburban um, density level, so what we're going to get is entry level buyers, low move ups, look at the price ranges, 464, 532, so what we're really talking about is a conforming loan of 417 plus a 10 percent down. Um, we're friendly to that, that should be well within the market's financial capabilities. If you look at the concessions here, um, it's run about 13,000 on average, that's 3%. Some of this time period, this quarterly survey time period, would have included some federal tax credit, so the effective number is probably higher there. We would certainly encourage people to at least keep the concessions at the uh, former levels. Um, this is a market where you know, it's affected by confidence and it's affected by the weak economy, that sort of thing, so to make people commit and to make people uh, enter a long-term agreement to live in a home. We think they need to be incentive. There's bound to be tremendous amounts of buyer's remorse during weak economic times. Uh, so getting people off the fence will be a major struggle. If you look at this particular area, 100% of the communities have homeowners associations and dues. Those dues run from the low 100s up to the mid 300s couple that up with tax assessments, CFDs, Melarus, if you will, and the ownership costs can be fairly significant here. Those are numbers that are being carefully accounted for in loan qualifications these days, uh, so ownership costs are definitely an issue. There are a number of communities out here on the resale market that have been built over the years that are not as equally uh, burdened by some of these costs, and so a fair amount of demand is being deflected to the retail market a resale market, I should say, uh, based on ownership costs. Since real estate economics surveys this area quarterly, we can look at the trends going back any number of years we really choose here. As I mentioned earlier, we've seen the number of active developments draw down from 25 to 11, heading to 10. You can see the average of base prices peaked in the third quarter of 2006 at about 613,000. One year later, it had really only degraded to 610, but we know that incentives were much larger a year later. And since then, we've been in a steady downward path as the market tries to find its feet here and tries to match up home sizes and home prices with buyers' uh, effective financial capabilities. 
One of the things that we see in this market and many others, if you look at the average of unit sizes, is the unit sizes grew even as the market disruption intensified. Um, what causes that is more and more larger executive homes being on the market and fewer and fewer affordable entry level homes being on the market. And so these large uh, legacy homes dominate the, the competitive uh, landscape and the average unit sizes go up even though people are clamoring for smaller, more affordable homes. This is gradually reversing in the third quarter of 2010 with a, about a 40 foot drop off in average unit size and we would really expect this to uh, continue decline, to decline as people try to get homes into the price ranges where there's uh, more potent demand. Look at the average premium in this market. If you're familiar with this area, it's got fabulous topography. There's a lot of foothills, so there's open space, there's view lots, there's deep, wide pool lots, uh, many, many lot amenities. But um, the premiums have come way down so that in the most recent quarter, it's virtually zero. We know builders have sacrificed these premiums to secure a sale, essentially negotiating away these numbers even though there's a lot of historical precedents for premiums in this market. It's really just a sign of builder motivation to um, make sure that deal is signed even if some of that premium has to come out of the transaction. Look at the monthly sales rate. In the five years shown, the highest number is 156. We know this market was doing more than 200 sales per month at its peak and now we're down to just 21, so we essentially had a drawdown of over 90% in terms of the monthly sales. That translates right into these months of unsold inventory numbers. Those are the uh, dwelling unit counts essentially divided by the monthly sales rate. So when the monthly sales rate tapers off, all of a sudden those months of inventory tends to balloon. If the market were to suddenly return to even 75, or 100 sales a month, half or 40 percent of its peak several years ago, this entire area would look paper thin in terms of supply and as we'll talk to in part two, there's huge gaps in the market coverage out here in terms of where the homes are priced and sized and also there are gaps in the room counts and configurations. We talked to the uh, number of new home developments in this year, 34 down to 11 over the six years that we're talking about, soon to go to 10. Uh, the survey to survey sales volume, see 6.2 on a base of uh, what was it, 25 homes, so we were doing uh, substantially more sales in 2005 and that number's come off with a tiny rebound in the third quarter of 2009, tailing again lower in the third quarter of 2010. Now this part of Southern California tends to have uh, noticeable seasonal factors with the fourth quarter of every year and the first quarter of every year being the weakest periods. We usually go uh, soft here in this area about November, certainly no later. You know, October tends to degrade, November gets worse and so on with the market finally picking up about February. This has been a very atypical year, so we might have some changes here depending on what happens in our elections, um, a ch a change in the House and change in the political leadership might present a signal that uh, we'll get a few, some different ideas coming out of Washington that might help confidence. We'll have to see how that plays out, but this uh, has not been a typical year and it's unlikely to be a typical year uh, through its fourth quarter. Survey to survey price print trends, you can see this market was running about the mid 250s in the third quarter of 05, third quarter of 06, and since then we've drawn down. We have not seen the trough there, we've not seen a base there, and we're still getting declining volume. So if the volume's going down and the price is going down, we have not seen a base in this market. By comparison, the resale side is not the same. The resale side is looking much. Uh, more stable. The volume's not huge, but the pricing uh, appears to have stabilized here on the resale side. We'll talk to that a little bit more in part two. Here's the uh, survey to survey inventory changes. As I mentioned, this is really driven by sales velocity. So when the sales velocity drops off, it looks like the months of inventory is ballooning to some you know, huge number, 20.2 months in the most recent quarter. But that really totals just 433 units in all of the active developments. That's each phase 
out to their ultimate build out. Many of those units we can't come anywhere near building in the next year, so all of that inventory can't be delivered in you know six months, a year, twelve months. So uh, really, these inventory numbers are much lower than these months would indicate. And if we had, say, an average um, sales velocity, this and this uh, the inventory would look like I say paper thin and not nearly sufficient to provide decent market coverage. Now one of the things that happens when we don't have market coverage is there's lost opportunities. If there aren't single-story homes, if there aren't homes with the preferred room, bed and bath counts, if there aren't homes in the right unit sizes and right price ranges, then a lot of that uh, demand either remains latent or becomes deflected to the resale market. Uh, we've seen that taking place, so we believe there are pockets of opportunity in this area. We'll look at some of those a little bit later. Serve uh, survey to survey concessions. Um, you know, as we expected, we saw concessions rise dramatically through 05, 06, and 07. Looked a little uh, like a peak was in place in 08, uh, but then we've stalled and have not only had this, these concessions, but had federal tax credits on top of it. Um, incentives are going to be important in the uh, months and years ahead. How they shape out, whether you were going to need loan buy downs in another year, it's hard to say. There's got to be something to motivate people to make this sort of, of commitment uh, when confidence is low and the economic conditions are soft. That's part one. Please join us for part two today.